everyone, it's time to battle for Olympia. It's actually 10 days out to the 212 showdown. And uh, this is my first time going there. So we're gonna hit the shoulder. There's a Charles Cross, aka the trainer of the champion. Let's get it done, okay? How do you feel about Hide dropping down into that 212 division? Well, I mean, he's always weighed about 218, 220. I mean, 212 is perfect for him, you know? He don't kill himself getting down. And if you notice, he's pretty full right now. Is he pretty close to his weight? I mean, he's at his weight. He's like 212. That's what you want to be. I mean, he's easy to go up. He just feed himself a little bit more. But he's staying pretty close. He's going to be right on time. You know, weighing at 212. Eat his way up a little bit more. He's perfect. Do you think you're going to see a lot more of these guys that are right in that 220 competition range pull themselves down into the? It just depends on how tall they are. You know, you can be too tall and it looks bad because you look too small when you go against those guys who are shorter, weighing 210, 212. So, but for Hide, he's right at the cusp. So it's going to be great to see him get up there and do what he can do. Is there any other pros you'd like to see maybe drop down into that category? You know, I, that's not my decision. It's theirs. You know. Yeah. Um, it, when he did pee that open, you gotta understand, he came in what, 10th a couple of times, 9th, 8th, you know, so hey, he can hang with the best. So this is gonna be great for him. So we'll see what happens. If you can hang, stay up. If you can't, then move down, you know? Sure. Think of it is, that decision was made by Rich, wanting him to drop down because Flesh Lewis moved out. 
so it's perfect for heat eggs. So how are you feeling this prep? How's your, you feel good, energy good and everything? Uh, great. Yeah? This time I can with, start training with Charles and uh, uh, George Paddle. It was so much different, you know. Yeah. I was dying, you know, last couple of shows. I wanted to quit because <laughs> it was so hard. I thought it was my age, but because of my age, you know. So the thing was, I, was overtrained. This time, he fixes this guy you. make sure I'm, I'm healthy. I've never seen a guy Powerful. come back every single day and ready to go like he is. He, he trains really hard, puts 100% into it every single workout. He's the type of guy you said, enough is enough, stop. <laughs> time to go home. But he'll keep going. No longer you want to beat him up, he'll take it. So you're probably like five or 10 pounds below your normal competition weight that you were doing before. Do you think you've gotten used to that over the last few shows? I mean, obviously the first couple of times getting down there. You know, for him, it was never hard to get down. It's just having the condition to go with it. We hooked up with a good team. The team works really well together. So, I mean, it's easy for him now. I'm telling you, he just coasts. He's not killing himself. He's enjoying the workouts. He leaves, and he's tired when he leaves. But he's here, here the next day, refreshed, ready to go. That's awesome. So that's the thing, having a good team, the nutritionist does his job, which is George Farron, who does his job for him. It works like a charm. That's awesome. good. So, usually this time I'm, I'm like zombie. But today I, like you, you see, I, I'm really up. Yeah. 10 days before show. So I show my to be. It's full, healthy. I can't wait to set them on stage. Good. Bring it up. Come on. You got this. That's it. 
Come on, get it. Hit it. Come on. Let me have it. Come on, hit it. Pull. Come on. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Five feels one pound. I think he likes beating you up. He likes it too. <laughs> That's what we need. We don't shrugs right now. Yeah. Unbelievable improvements. He, he's what kind of specific improvements do you think you've? Uh... Look at the thickness he has upper body. It was never that thick before. It was always a little shadow, but now I mean he's thick. And look at the roundness. The roundness that he's you know, acquired. It's, it's great. I mean, he's just constantly improving every day. Today, turn and face us. Face the other way. Slightly tilt over and pull straight up through. Look at, look at that. 
You begin to see a back now. Not something that's supposed to be a back. It's a back. One. That's it. Go, Pedro. All right, let's go. Show over hands. That's it. Come on. Show over his life. Okay. Really shrug it up in there. Shrug it up into it. Okay? Don't just pull up and down, drop it. Don't you pull and squeeze. Right there, toward the back. Three hands right there, perfect. Now pull up and pull up. Pull up. Oh, there you go. Pull up and down. That's it. That's what I want to see. Force it in there. Come on. Force it. Last two. Last one. That's it. Ah. Feel it? Good. Don't miss that. Let's Ooh, yeah. Come on. There you go. Come on. Don't miss that. Ooh. Come on. Ooh. Last one. Come on. So much uh, Good. new exercise. Want it. Want it. I, I've been training 20 something years, but a lot of exercise I never really done like that. You know. It hits. The area I, I I really needed to bring up, so this is one of them. Let's do it right. Here we go. Alright, let's go. There you go. Do it again. Come on. That's it. Come on. Yes. Come on. That's it. Come on. Stop. Turn around. Go straight up and down real quick. Let's go. Hit this ball. Let's go. Straight up and down. Work it. Work it. Into your neck. Come on. Pull it. Into your neck. Come on. Don't give up. Two more. That's it. Woo. Let's turn this thing. You see what we're talking about? This is what we're trying to create. Look at this. That's, that's work. He didn't do nothing. You see it. It's already sticking out. He's doing nothing. Just standing. We're going to work it. It's going to be right. You son of Relax. If you, you can't hide it, Make it stand, yeah. you gotta have it. Right. my sponsor Gaspari, Gasp, and a Cyclone Cup, Jantana, Oxygen Factor, Oxygen Gym. Thank you so much all the fans, Japan and all, everywhere, all over the world. Thank you so much. Without you guys, I wouldn't be here. Appreciate all the support. I make you proud, okay? Olympia 2014. Another year of thrills, chills, and <laughs> pills. But I gotta tell you, the most exciting news is Hide dropping him down into the 212 division. Well, I got news for you. He's a threat. He's a deadly threat. He was a threat at the big man division, and no telling how much damage he's gonna do at the 212 division. I wish him well, and he'll kick ass like he always does in other ways. He'll bring the package, and I hope the other guys are ready for it. But on, and on the other hand, we'll be wandering around looking for all you kiddies and kidettes at the Expo. Come join World Power and the rest of the Madhouse group of the IFBB as we bring you more thrills to the conversation. And guess what's coming next? Watch out.
To you again, 2014 Battle for the Olympia, 50th anniversary of the Olympia. It's going to be a good one. Make sure you guys check it out. You guys remember Roxy from uh, from last year's DVD, right? Sit down. I remember you from the from playing ball. Camera shy. <laughs> We're getting ready to go to the gym, Gold's Bridgewater. We uh, normally train um, nothing on Sunday, but today for you guys and my man Bruce behind the camera, we're gonna give you guys a little spectacle. And uh, instead of training quads tomorrow, we're gonna smash out some legs for the battle for the Olympia. Show you guys how we do it four weeks out under this bullshit lightweight that you guys see on some of these other DVDs four weeks out. We're gonna get it in. No broken arms this time, right? No, that was a nightmare. For those of you who pick up my DVD, you'll see. That uh, I was squatting a week out. She always has to have an ice cream. Um, what were we about a week out from Dallas Europa? And I brought 500 out of the rack. And um, I got, I think, on the 12th rep, I got stuck, and um, which I, never really happens. And my training partner, Mike Polomsky, at the time, was, uh, wasn't used to me ever bottoming out on a squat because that never really happens. And uh, I ended up dropping 500 pounds and he came underneath me at the last second and lo and behold, I broke his arm in two spots because I dropped the weight. And um, he's fully recovered now, thank God. And um, you know, we, we still catch a training session in here or there, but some things like uh, back and chest, he, um, you know, because of the pressure on, on his arm, it um, it hurts. So we don't get up as much as we used to. But after the Olympia and a couple more shows, we'll uh, we're gonna get back to, to grinding again. And uh, got my aminos. I always bring them with me on leg decks. I always end up going through about two more scoops before I throw up. On our way to Zampetti Goals in Bridgewater, we literally just left my house. It's about a two-minute drive. Um, I'm very blessed to have a gym this close to my house because even in shitty weather, snow, if I had to, I could walk there. So it's um, it's awesome to have a, a gym this close. Not only just a gym, but it, you know, in my opinion, one of the best gold gyms in New Jersey. It was an old powerhouse. Rob and Mary Zampetti, who owned a gold gym a couple towns over, uh, bought the powerhouse, uh, changed it up tremendously, added a lot of uh, great equipment to it, and I really made it a, a bodybuilding gym with with still a fitness atmosphere because you know it's hard for a gym to make money when it's just uh, you know a hardcore bodybuilding gym. You know, there's not a lot of gyms like Bev's and uh, you know Venice Golds that can survive with that hardcore mentality. Time to kill some legs and throw some food up. Let's go. What's up, everybody? We are at Gold Gym Bridgewater. About to get it in. I'm here with my best friend, Chris Lecompte. Been one of my best friends for many, many years. Trained together many, many times. Um, top four national bodybuilder. Took a layoff for a couple years, but trying to force him to get back into it. And then I got newbie, little young Rich Vellucci. Rich is uh, one of the young bucks I train with. He's 24. I'm the old George Clooney, as they like to call me, of the group because of the little gray in my beard. But um, I train with Rich and uh, my buddy Chris, who couldn't make it today. More often, they're, they're two young kids. The great thing about them is, uh, you know, I've trained with amateur bodybuilders, pro bodybuilders, 
and when you train with amateurs that are up and coming, you know, a lot of times they, they don't push themselves as hard as they should. Um, I train with some pros that are great, some pros that, you know, once they turn pro, they kind of, um, you know, in their minds they already made it so they don't push themselves. And training with Rich and uh, my buddy Chris Ortega on a daily basis, you know, they're, they don't have anything to do with bodybuilding. Um, they were power lifters, so, you know, I kind of drafted them to train with me because I saw them training hard and pushing themselves. So, you know, they could give a shit about bodybuilding. They just like to, to push some heavy ass weight and push themselves to the limit. So it, uh, it pushes me. And then, uh, you know, I've trained with Chris for years um, when I was up and coming as an amateur and uh, before and after I turned pro. So it is, uh, it's awesome to catch a training session with him, especially, you know, how hard he trains and him being my best friend. You know, we kind of, uh, we have some good, uh, good times in the gym. So we're gonna smash some legs today throw up in some buckets and uh, show you guys how we do four weeks out from the L. Let's get it. All right, so we'll do that. We'll, 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 we'll train and we'll squat last. Then we'll just go as heavy as we get. Maybe we won't get 15 reps, but we'll just go ahead. Yeah. All right, we're cool with that. Teamwork. I don't. I do about three sets of these. 20 reps. I don't count this shit as working sets though. This is just more like a cushioning to prevent injury. And I say it all the time, but I've never had a training injury, which is great because I've been training since I was 16 years old, but I've, it ha most of my injuries have been because of football and uh, my nasty car I got into a couple years ago. So, I just had surgery on this meniscus uh, not even a year ago. So I'm just uh, still, still dealing with some aches and pains, but... We make it. All my training partners, it's crazy now that if I think back to it, have all played and it, all played college football or, or played football in some way. He played football in high school, I played football in high school and college, he played football in high school and college. Blums. Mike Blumsky played football in high school and college. It's an easy transition. It's just cra you know, I think it's like a football mentality, man. Like you, you can kind of tell the way someone trains if they're like a, an athlete, you know, or just here to train. It's, it's weird. Yeah, I had to, I had to exit the uh, the wrestling lifestyle pretty quick. I, I did it like middle school and like. You know, I train like a power lifter. Not in the sense that I do reps of one or two or three or anything like that, but I train heavy. And you guys that know that have watched me, you know, I'm not 260 pounds by any means. I'm not Juan Morel, you know, I'm not Akeem Williams. I'm not you know, that big, but for a five, a five foot five, a little Italian midget, you know, who can squat with six plates, you know, bench four plates, incline four, Played throw around 170s on dumbbell on for inclines. I mean, in my opinion, it's pretty damn strong for a little kid, especially when I'm, you know, close out to a show. I was 210 this morning, so I'm already making weight. So, you know, 210 pounds running on that weight, you know, is good. There's not a lot of guys that handle that heavy ass weight. You got me, Jose, and uh, Derek Farnsworth, who's a little. Little beast of a human being. Other than that, you know, I'm not saying nobody trains hard, but I'm just talking about heavy. Can't handle that amount of weight. Not a lot of guys that train with that heavy ass weight like we do. You can tell in our physiques too. People that train heavy, you play more that train half ass. I'm okay. We're just gonna press it, right? Yeah, we'll start with four. We'll just add up, and then we'll do a drop at the end, and then we'll go to uh, we'll go right to hacks or one of these. Figure it out. Yeah. I think you might have to go from a rated PG DVD to a rated R after my potty mouth. <laughs> People ask me what uh, Quadro means. He's a big reason how I got my nickname. Well, we were going with the status for a while. I got him a couple of real nice status t shirts when he decided to change his nickname. 
So he was uh, the status. We're sitting around the dining room table just bullshitting and uh, he's saying, we're talking about how he's always a scene everywhere he goes. He's, he's, he's the center of attention. He's, it's his personality. It's, it's what endears him to a lot of people. So we're talking, you know, what's, what's the scene? Someone who makes a scene in Italian. He's got a big, you know, Gaetano Sisternino. It's about as Italian as you're going to get. He's got a big fan base. So went into Google Translate. I'm a big Google guy, and uh, and the scene in in Italian is quadro. So I said, how perfect is this the guy with huge legs? Quadro makes a scene perfect. So, long story short, Next got the nickname. Yep, that's how it was born. Got the T-shirts, got the merchandise. Still haven't seen a damn cent. <laughs> <laughs> Jack up two. Six, whew, four, two. <laughs> That's what KOs everybody normally. That was uh, baptism, baptism by fire. First day we trained together, right? First day of training. Leg press drop set. We did. We, did, I, we started with extension. My legs were numb for uh, the we did extension. Time. Did presses and did it like a triple, quadruple, whatever drop at the end. Yeah, he was white as a ghost, which white and here he is. Yeah. Yep. Chris was outside puking in the tire. Yep. The <laughs> big tire that they flip. Oh, I'm fun. like, we just went from a three-man show to a one-man yep. crew. Yeah, it didn't didn't really have a strong showing in our first training session. set because I'm gonna either murder this or this way it's gonna say fuck you and I'm, I'm in trouble come on okay okay this sport's done a lot for me it's giving me a lot so I'm constantly trying to, to give back I just had a kid I met at the Olympia this year Andrew Ulmer, his girlfriend contacted me on Facebook, asked if uh, she could buy him a plane ticket in a hotel here for a couple days to train with me for his birthday. Like seven weeks out for the Olympia. I could have said no, because I'm prepping and, you know, I didn't want to be bothered, but, you know, I look at it like, you know, in the grand scheme of things, who the fuck am I? I never thought people would want to train with me, want my autograph. I think when you're tired, cranky, dieting, you still gotta look at the big picture and realize why you're here. Sometimes I hate myself for thinking of shit like this. There's always somebody out there who fucking is training harder than you. So that's always in the back of my mind. You know, what's Aaron doing? If I just did, you know, that for 10, 20, 30, 60 reps, did Aaron do for 61? You know, if I don't squat today, so I was A squatting. If, you know, if 
I didn't do morning cardio. It was Jose doing morning cardio. If I didn't pose after I trained, it was flex posing. You know, who's, who's doing more? Who wants it more? That's what it comes down to. So, you know, some of this shit is, is pretty insane, especially that I do close to a show, the weight that I handle. I've been told it's stupid. It's pointless, unnecessary. Pretty, pretty accurate, some of those comments, but, you know, if I can do this and lift heavy ass weight and feel good and stay strong and do it up till the day before the show, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Come on, nine, one more, finish, come on. Great set. Couldn't pick for arms to do today, huh? Huh? Couldn't pick arms to do today. You know, I'm four weeks out, it's like I'm four days out. Still eating a decent amount of food, still feel strong. Normally 240, a little heavier in the off season. 210 now, I'm 30 pounds less than what I normally am, but I don't have all that weight bearing on my joints, my shoulders, my knees. I actually feel better. I feel like I can lift a lot more. No game plan. See, this is just go. Yeah, I'm not getting this uh, for like months, dude. I know it. It's like this. Uh, Allergic reaction, squatting and hack squat. My, my cheek turns red, my lips get big, I look like a night professor. I think I take a Benadryl half my workout. He's literally the only person I know that's actually allergic to training legs. I've never heard anything like in my life. I'm a country boy of heart. Don't think I got no biggie on this iPod when I'm squatting. I listen to rap and rock when I uh, when I train. In my car, it's all about country. I'm a I'm a redneck at heart. But uh, unfortunately, I can't listen to uh, Brad Paisley or Tim McGraw when I'm squatting. That would be awkward, and it would also be awkward if you guys saw a Battle of the Olympia DVD and I didn't squat some some heavy ass weight. So, let me give you guys what you want. Going heavy is subjective, not only to the person, but how you're training. There's a, uh, you know, if we would have started out squatting, you know, maybe we'd go up to five, six plates. You know, we warmed up, did four sets of leg press. The last set was 60, 60 reps. You know, so now we might only squat four or five, but that four or five is going to feel like five, six hundred pounds because of the pre-exhaustion we just did with the squats. So it's all about changing up the workouts, man. I don't always squat 500, 600 pounds. Sometimes I squat in the beginning. Sometimes I squat in the middle. Sometimes I'll squat dead last. Sometimes I won't even squat at all. You know, it's about changing it up. That's what's fun about it. So I don't ever have a game plan in my head. I just come in and feel it out and just throw on some weight. You know, Charles is a big advocate of 12 to 15 reps, and that's uh, that's the same rep range that I've always stayed in, um, and that's my, my comfort zone, 12 to 15 reps. I'm more impressed somebody that can squat 500 pounds for 15 reps rather than somebody who can squat 600 for two. That doesn't impress me. Somebody can bang out 500 all day long on the squats. That to me is impressive. So that's the uh, that's kind of how I like to train. Anybody that's anybody that's watched some old Battle for the Olympians will get a kick out of what, what I'm rocking underneath these sweatpants. I don't train in them, so it's not 1990 or 80. But these things really help my knee keep my legs warm. But I gotta get half, halfway naked every time I gotta wrap my knees. I like Darren Charles. Darren used to rock these all the time. I think I've still seen him recently in some of the gyms when I'm in Florida, rocking these spandex. I don't know, Bruce, 4 315 felt pretty light. 
something. If 405 feels good, I'll throw in. I definitely ain't gonna handle six today for more than like a triple. So we'll, we'll play around with 500 probably. Let's see how it works. I'm coming for you, Flex. Better not take it easy. <clears throat> coming for that ass. Bruce's hands? <laughs> That's not Jose. <laughs> I can tell by the accent. Who's Jose? <laughs> like, my fucking hands are big. His are like bat paws. <laughs> That's the crazy part, man. It's like they're all, they're all like, you know, they got your old years on me. Jose's almost 40. David Hammer's almost 40. Yeah. You know? Um, Sammy's 41. I feel good. If I get it for one, I get it for one. If I get it for 10, I get it for 10. You don't know unless you fucking try, man. This is where uh, luck struck Mike Plumsky a couple weeks back. Love you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ready, Chris? Let's go. Come on. Lightweight, lightweight. Okay. We good. Fucking 212 out there, put that on a bar and do it for eight, four weeks out. After leg pressing, you want to talk about training. Fuck. That'll pucker up your butthole. Shit. Nice heavy set of the day. Tell Jose to train arms. Because I know he'll throw this on the bar too. He did legs. Huh? He did legs. Did he squat? Maybe next year, Jose, when you're 40, you can get a redo. <laughs> you guys watch these Battle for Olympias or videos we shoot for MD or whatever. And you all think we hate each other. Everybody thought I hate Aaron. I talk shit about Jose and Flex. People don't realize that this is a business. If we all, I love Flex, Jose, David. Those guys are like, really like brothers to me. And what do brothers do when they're not at family dinners? They're talking shit and busting each other's chops. And that's what we do. That's the fun of the sport. We bust each other's chops all day long. We can go back and forth and joke and throw jabs at each other because it's fun. It makes the sport interesting. But at the end of the day, you know, we battle out on stage, but we're friends off stage. I don't like losing in anything. Anybody that is a competitor, I've said this line a lot in the past week. Nobody wants to say I made it to the Super Bowl and lost. Nobody cares if you make it to the big game. They remember if you win, you know, as much as I strive to, to win the Olympia, 
if there's anybody or any few guys I would lose it to and not mine, it's guys like David, Flex, Jose, because those are good, genuine guys. You know, not saying that everybody else isn't, but I, I built a very strong bond with those three individuals in this class. So if I had to, you know, take second place to anybody, it would be one of those three. But at the end of the day, I'm trying not to let that shit happen. And just whoever's in here. This, ladies and gentlemen, Tony, I'm gonna murder his last name. Curcio. Curcio. He is my, uh, number my number one fan. Every time I get clothing in, he's the first one to buy it. He is my um, IG'er, except he recently moved to Florida. He's back for a month, but he moved there. And he is my picture taker when I send pictures to Chris. He's also my taxi service when I need rides to the airport. He's like a, uh, and you guys remember Cordell Stewart. He played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was like a punter at kickoff. He was a punter at kicker, receiver, running back, quarterback. That's what Tony is. I need something done. I'm the handyman. Tony's there. I need my phone. DSN up there. My Jim's got to carry. My products. I do these a little differently. Um, you'll see some Charles showed me. It's, it focuses on your quads, but the pad rests right on the right on the edge of your shoulder, and you keep your your, your pelvis forward, and you, you just sit down instead of sitting completely back like this. later you guys are gonna think my legs look like dog shit and be so swollen <laughs> Fucking Star Trek. <laughs> Trying legs with me, you get you get face swole syndrome. <laughs>
Yeah. Some uh, some little gremlin by the name of Jose Raymond. Uh, beat me in 07. I took second. He, he, that was the first time I met him. I, I, he, he makes fun of me. He's like, every time you film a video, you always bring up my name somehow. But it's true. I didn't know who he was. And uh, he beat me. And he came up to me backstage. His story is completely different because he exaggerates everything. And he's, uh, he came up to me backstage. I was pissed. I didn't win. And he's like, your guy, right? I was like, yeah. He goes, you should be fucking excited. You just took second place to me at your first nationals. And I was like, who's this idiot? <laughs> and uh, ever since then, man, I've talked to him. We've exchanged numbers. I've talked to him every day. He's a riot. He's, he's, he's like a big brother. Really good, really good guy, man. He uh, pushes me. He, him, him and Flex believe in me a lot. Flex don't, doesn't think I ever give myself enough credit. But whatever. Um. as low as 210 and then he fed me up last week one day and I got to 214 215 and then uh, from Friday to today I lost three and a half pounds so I don't know what he's gonna do because normally on Mondays I have like before I train I do chicken three muffins from Dunkin Donuts like that's he normally has my high carb day like on yeah. and then after I train he has me do sushi yeah, and then well, I have my post-workout shake. Yeah, and then an hour later, I'll have sushi, and then he normally adds like a half a cup of cream of rice to my last meal. But what I do instead of doing the cream of rice, I'll just do a little extra sushi. And then if I want, like I'm craving like some trail mix or like a piece of candy, I'll just eat that instead, and I won't add yeah. the fuck. I won't even have the sixth meal. I don't want it. You know. If I could, I, I, can't tell you. I would train <laughs> quads and hams separately, but I have a full-time job. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys, a lot of the pros or personal trainers, make, they, make, they, make, they make their own schedule. You know, I don't have the ability to do that, so I don't usually train until about 6, 6.30 every night. And, uh, you know... I need two days. I don't. Not that I have two days off. I'm doing cardio every day, but it's uh, you know, with waking up early and working all day, um, it's good for me to to, to get that extra day off of training. And I know Charles was talking to me last time I was there about splitting my leg routine, but it's you know, hopefully one day if I'm uh, you know, Mr. Olympia and 
I can afford to not work, which I'll probably always work. Maybe this off season I'll split them up. I don't know. That's it. Only thing you didn't see me do today is stiff legs. On days I squat, I don't do stiff legs. But other than that, it's a wrap here. Do a little poser for you guys. Show you how swollen my legs are. And then uh, we'll see you back in my house. It's Aaron Clark. Welcome to my humble abode. And uh, you're just in time for me to get uh, my last meal in before we crush the legs this afternoon. So, welcome. Come on in. So, when I buy beef, um, you know, I normally try to get some organic grass fed if I can. I won't say that I always do, but um, if it's available, I try to make that happen. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is I'll have 8 ounces of this beef, it's 1 pound so that's easy, I'll just cook the pound and uh, have 8 ounces now, I'll have the other 8 ounces tomorrow for my red meat meal and um, I'll have that with some, for right now since I'm going to do legs, about a cup and a half of jasmine rice and then to top it off I'll probably do, I either will have spinach if I have that cooked or I'll do a scoop of a superfood greens type of product, um, you know, whether or not I have veggies in and how that goes. So, this is a good substitute if you're lazy like me. So, it's cooking. Alright, while it's, so I feel like, let's say you eat chicken breast for all your meals. I think you can get away with that, but if you're eating all egg white meals, I think you need to also eat a heavier protein, which you, red meat is going to be your heaviest one, pretty much. Um, so I feel like it's also good for the fullness, and there's things in the red meat that you're not going to get from everything else. So especially if you do things like a lot of egg whites, I think that um, eating good red meat, not like crappy, cheap, I mean, you know, there's a lot of bad things in red meat. So in moderation, you know, you don't want to do too much red meat, but um, I try not to do more than once a day. Maybe... I won't say I never do, but once a day is good for me. Now this, I keep this in. Now when you train hard, a lot of people are afraid to have sodium, okay? Now I'm not saying this is a great source, but don't be scared to eat salt. I eat pretty high sodium. Um, if you train hard and you train heavy and you sweat, you need salt. You know, I see a lot of people and they think that if they eat salt, you know, they'll hold water and your body should be used to eating. If you're an athlete, your body should be used to eating, you know, at least a decently high sodium. Unless you have blood pressure problems, then you should monitor it. But it will help you train. It'll make you stronger. So just keep that in mind. It's nothing to be afraid of. I also sometimes instead of the beef, um, I do bison. Bison's also very good. Okay. Off season, um, you know, I'll still do a lot of these same meals. I'll just probably add more carbs to it. I'll eat extra carbs. Um, and no real restricting calories. Uh, for somebody who has some stomach problems, if you're a bodybuilder and you're off season and you're lean, you just eat. Um, you know, I stay on my diet, but if I want to have a little extra or this, that, I'll do it. Um, but yeah, same foods. You know, when you train hard year round, 
you try to still, I think it should be a lifestyle, it shouldn't just be a 12 week diet. Uh, so I do this all year when I turn up the heat free contest. Um, then the changes don't have to be so crazy. Um, I always make sure that I'm not putting on bad weight, extra weight that I'm going to have to deal with later on because that's dumb. Um, people wonder how you get your skin thin, we'll never get it fit. Uh, because fat cells don't go away anywhere near as easy as you gain them. And once you gain fat cells, they're going to make your skin look thick for pretty much ever. It'll take you a long time to get rid of a fat cell. This is my lovely lady, Christina, and uh, she's a certified massage therapist, so she helps me so I'm not wheelchair bound <laughs> at 25 years old. Okay. So, keeps me going, helps me in the kitchen, helps me with everything, really, because I'm a mess. <laughs> yeah, <pretty good. laughs> like I said, uh, 2011, that's me in Maryland, East Coast. That was my first show I did after being a teenager. So I'm uh, 22 there. And, um, you know, it was, I, to be honest with you, I, I kind of knew what I was doing, but I really had no idea what I was doing at the same time. Um, but it was more or less trial and error, like, let's see if I can do this. And uh, I did. I won. So uh, with that under my belt, it kind of gave me the motivation to, I wanted to do junior nationals the next year. Um, but... Being in the situation I was in, I was going to school, I didn't have a lot of expendable income, and so, uh, yeah, I ended up, you know, because people told me, oh, you want a pro card, you got to do junior nationals, you got to build up your name and momentum, and then you got to go do USAs or nationals, and so, you know, at the end of the day, I looked and I was like, man, I don't have the funds to do both, so I decided, well, if they're going to look at me, they're going to look at me, the USAs, so I'm going to compete with the USAs, and uh, yeah, I won my pro card there. Um, and then the, the following picture is me, 2013, my first pro show. Afterwards, I shot with Muscular Development and uh, I just sh I, with Per Brunel while he was still with them. Um, this is my girlfriend's trophy. She competed. Um, this is this year. Nice muscle, bikini class. So yeah, that's my most recent trophy, plaque. Over here we have, this is USA's, this is uh, Maryland. It's funny how the most trophies are at the, the regional show that I did. They're the biggest ones. And this is the Arnold Classic, uh, my third place medal in the 212 division. And then this smaller man here, this is a show I did to qualify before I did Teenage Nationals in 2008. I did the Southern States in Florida. And uh, I actually got second in the light heavyweight class. And I got second to the same kid that beat me the next week at T Nationals. And uh, it was about my tan. I didn't have a tan. I messed up. I didn't plan ahead. And my poor father didn't know how to do it and was grossed out. And basically, I went up there looking like people told me Casper is what they did. They're like, Casper. And, you know, it was eating me up inside, but I laughed. Um, the last one was uh, the, the Teenage Nationals Trophy uh, for second place in light heavyweight. And um, let's see what else. So since he's training legs today, I wouldn't work on his legs before he trains them. Um, just because he's going to overstimulate the muscle and I don't want to relax it before he does that. So first thing I do is I warm up the muscle, although it doesn't take very long for him. He's always warm. 
Um, he's had a ton of injuries, so I know where to be careful. Um, but his back is usually the major problem. Uh, he used to get, let's see, he, you have degenerative disc disorder. So a lot of the intervertebral discs in here get very tight and compressed. And he used to have a lot of shooting pain uh, here in the sacral area. So I just try and loosen up his back as much as I can. I do maybe like a medium deep tissue at this point on him. Um, he also has had shoulder issues, pec tear. He's had, what was it? Um, his TFL has had problems before, which is uh, basically a hip flexor. So if your hip flexor is tight, everything's tight. Usually I find that a lot of bodybuilders have um, a ton of trigger points, mainly in like the scapular area. Um, and that's usually due to excessive caffeine. Uh, I just did a quick one. I'm gonna chug some water and take a pre-workout and get ready to do this. What's up guys? This is my personal beast that keeps me safe. So don't come and try to break into my house because he will <laughs> rip your leg off. He keeps me strong. Sometimes we arm wrestle for treats. Um, you know, and it's good that he's strong because I'm on a diet, so he wins most of the treats. But uh, he's pretty smart. Uh, Christina taught him a lot of tricks. So, uh, yeah, treats are a good motivator. Did you say his name yet? Huxley. This is Huxley. Yeah. Sorry. That's rude. I think my name is you. That's just about all I got to show you around here for now. So, it's time to go do legs. A day you look forward to all week, but you do it at the same time. So, three weeks out, um, you know, I'm going to pretty much be doing the same thing I normally would. Um, I don't really cut back on weight unless I feel like my knees are going to break. Then I'll just be smart, but try to train the wheels hard to the end. I stopped training them about 10 days out or so. Welcome, we're here at Powerhouse Gym in Woodbridge, Virginia. My name is Kelly, I'm the owner here. Gym has been here for about seven years now. We are absolutely the most hardcore gym in all of Northern Virginia. Getting ready for a great day and a great workout. Aaron Clark is over here, getting ready to get a little bit of video of him on his road to the Olympia. I was one of the uh, original owners of the gym about seven years ago with two partners. Took it over um, by myself about a year and a half ago and really looking to take this gym to a different level, make it a little bit different, a little more hardcore. Um, something definitely for the competitive athlete versus a lot of the big box gyms that are out there. So, we're like I said, we're trying to go a little bit more hardcore. Um, definitely the only gym in the area with platforms, with chalk, with Olympic lifting. We've got some MMA stuff that goes on. Um, just a little, every gym has a lot of the same stuff. What makes this place different is the atmosphere and the attitude of the people that walk through the door. What's up, everybody? Day two, back at Powerhouse in Woodbridge, and today we're gonna do legs. So you saw me sweat yesterday. Today is gonna be a disaster because it's hot as hell in here. And uh, I'm gonna do some giant sets and try to keep the food in my stomach and my eyes on the prize. So let's do it. Stay tuned, pay attention, and don't puke. I think it's very important that even if you split up your quad and ham training, you have to warm up your hamstrings before you hit your quads or you'll develop all kinds of issues. It's not just about working a muscle, but filling it with blood and getting it loose before you hit the other. The protagonist and antagonist. To start, I'll do this. Super set with spot machine. And then, um, so, we'll just, go, we'll just stick a little bit shorter today. Sometimes I'll go up to as much as five exercises in a giant set, but we'll just do 
three stations. Um, since the gym is split into two levels, and we'll do some more when we get downstairs to the heavy stuff. But I'm gonna do about 20 reps here, and then probably 10 reps there, and then come back and try to get another 10 reps on the extension. sets light here <coughs> to warm up and then I'll put um, probably four plates on here and do some walking lunges super set with the squats um, you know I do do straight squat sets but oftentimes when I get close to a show I'm kind of scared of my strength a little bit so I try to force myself to still train just as intense but scale back um, it make the weight feel just as heavy Sometimes you'll do two and you realize that's all you yeah. have. I'll be there two twelve by the end of this workout. Jesus Christ. This is so soaked that I can't even <laughs> like I just can't breathe, my skin can't breathe.
four plates. front spots over here. Instead, I used to do a lot of front squats, but for some reason, they just don't really feel right to me anymore. So, um, you know, I feel like I have really good form with back squats, and then I can get a much better contraction with them. I just make, you gotta make sure you set the bar high up, so you really use your quads, and uh, you know, not just ass and lower back. Because I've done so many super sets, I'm just gonna do a few straight sets just to finish off, and then we're pretty much done here. on making it through this leg workout. I know how to congratulate myself. It took a lot out of me. Probably a whole damn gallon of water. This is my second shirt that I sweat through. And I wanted another one, but we're done now. So it's kind of time to go refuel. 
just some carbs and fluids. And uh, yeah, thanks to you all for, you know, following me and, uh, you know, I appreciate all the fan base I've been able to build this past year. Um, you know, as my career has taken off so quick and uh, I just want you all to know that I'm working hard and, uh, you know, I'm going to be the best I can be and uh, take advantage of these opportunities. So keep an eye on me, guys. I won't let you down. So three weeks from now, Two Club Olympia, Aaron Clark, and Mock Video Productions. This is Quads. Dunzo, out. Welcome to the tank house. Come on in, man. This is Charles the Tank Dix. We're coming into my little humble home. The tank get ready for 2014 Miss Olympia Battle of 212. Very excited about it. Very, very excited. Haven't been to Olympia since 2008, so I feel like a newbie. So I'm a brand new to the Olympia again. So I'm very excited about that, man. Coming into my little humble home. Uh, we got about eight ounces of chicken and three yeah. ounces of sweet potato. Yes, sir. Just a typical uh, pre workout meal for you? Yeah, it's a typical uh, pre workout meal. Yeah, so, I'll be too. Right. so, normally, like, um, like today, we got legs today. So, on legs and back day, I normally eat um, a quart meal right before because of my biggest body part day. So, It's time to eat. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. So what's your uh, what's your typical day look like food wise? Oh, food wise, man. Let's see, I got. I mean, he got me. My coach Trey got me at um, eight meals. So I got uh, eight meals. My car was like, actually, I can read this off the tee. So you know, you know, us bodybuilders, we meet here, so we gotta have stuff structured to it. So it's like, man, I got one, two, three. I got four car meals. That's it. And rice, chicken, tilapia, veggies, which is awful. Now, actually, right now I'm at, at 1,600 calories, 300 grams of protein, and 55 grams of carbs, and 20 grams of fats. Man, my son get mad at that. <laughs> That's my little typical little, little pre-workout meal. And then, um, after I eat this, I'll take all my pre-workout drink for um for performance labs um i'll take that and um I'll sit around about 20 minutes and be ready to roll so i'm gonna eat this little bird food <laughs> this is we got the wings split was my first pro show that's one last like what july last month mm -hmm. and um and of course you got the arnold's which was the first 212 arnold which i was Happy to be a part of, so I was part of history. And you got me and my crazy son Rock in my picture up there, so he wanted to put that there. Then you got a couple pictures of the arm. Um, and I came with the idea with the trunks. I said, man, I'm gonna um, put my trunks up there as a paraphernalia too. And uh, got a couple shots. But that's Chicago Pro Trunks, so he got a couple, a couple shots of that. Uh, he got free collection of my trophy from the, from uh throughout the career. He got a couple of the uh Roper shows, which Betty and uh Benny Ed put on a good show as usual. Love to do their shows. A couple of state level shows that I did early in my career. And a couple of those right there. This is my favorite because do I turn pro. So I'm yeah. So that's when I turned pro, it's my favorite trophy. So that was a cool that moment I was so dead. And I say this will be my second Olympia. 
that was my first one that I did in 2008. So like I say, it's been a long time. I'm do, man. I ain't been Olympia forever. Well, yeah, you turned pro in the yeah, and then you got yeah, the Olympia the next year. And yeah, like, and I ain't, been, I ain't even been back since then, man. So this going to be, I'm really, really excited about it. So I'm really, it's been a long time. I'm like, man, I forgot what Olympia felt like. So, so now I'm back in the... And of course, y'all know I'm a big Gator fan. I got Gator stuff everywhere. Gator chill, Gator blankets, Gator bags, Gator throw blankets, Gator hot mounts. <laughs> Just love collaging me and him. As you see, we sleep all the time. But of course, he's a, he a South Carolina fan. I'm a Florida fan, so we always kind of bump heads. And how old is he now? He's four years old, 85 in January. So we go back and forth with, with Florida and South Carolina stuff. So, so that's pretty much it, man. Pretty much it, my little, my little home to home. I started my career as a middleweight. I turned pro as a light heavy. So I was always stuck that 190 more. So in the last two years, I done gained 24 pounds. Last two years versus it took me from 2002 to 2007 to gain 24 pounds. I gained 24 pounds in two years. So, man, it was like a big difference, man. I wish I had, Trey got some pictures. I wish I had some pictures to show y'all, man. I was about like that big compared to now. And, um, man, with the, with the new training, man, we just, you know, some days we did heavy, some days we did high repetition, some days we did circuit training. So, when he had all that in, our body just, phew, it just started changing. I was like, that. I said, what's funny is like, I'm in my 40s and I'm progressing with my 40s I did in my 30s. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so, what do from Greenwood, South Carolina? You need probably too many people ain't never heard of. So, it's like, where's Greenwood? So, um, to come where I come from, man, it, it, it feels good to be mentioning them same names of other cats. So, so man, I'll, I'll get excited. I get excited. I mean, I'm just, you know, I tell them, I say, man, you, I'm with you. What, what do you want to get out of Olympia? I mean, of course I want to play top three, top five, but just to know my name is back in the mix and everything, that's pretty big for me. So, hey, just to make it the 50th anniversary of Olympia, man, that's going to be big. So, I'm I'm, I'm going to get get a check when I want to do well, which I, I mean, I think I will. You know what I'm saying? Come on. All right, man, we're about to just aim on pre-workout meal before I do legs and so what I'm about to do now is take my pre-workout which the company I'm signed with is Performance Performance Max Labs you got the Fit Max which is my favorite then you got the Hyper Max which is also my favorite also so what I normally do is mix both of them together and hope I get jacked up enough to do these legs so That one scoop. So I do that, man. I mixed up in my little, my little tornado. Nope. Alright, this is Charles the Tank Dixon, and today I got my last leg training day before the Olympia, which is 19 days out. So I'm going to a brutal leg workout with my trainer and coach, Dr. Trey Hodge, which, but he laughed and not smiling. He's going to be like, ha ha, in a few minutes. But um, we're going to show you how the tank get on good leg workout in. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be intense. Y'all might see me on the floor a couple of times, breathing hard. But y'all see how I do my leg workout, how I get my tank wheels in shape and tight for the Olympia. So we'll get together maybe about a good hour session. and. Uh, Y'all see how we roll on leg day. And we got um my training partner, yeah, NPC um NPC phenomenon <laughs> JT. That's my training partner, everyday training partner, which um he started training with me, but we both hooked up with Dr. Trey now. So um we about to get a leg work out of here. Hope y'all enjoy and watch us get it on today. Uh, we do a mixture between heavy, um, a lot of volume. We do a lot of rest pauses, uh, a lot of supersets. Especially we, this is quad day for us, so we focus on constant tension. Um, 
you'll probably see him passing out in between each set about the first two sets, and he'll always do that. I think it's his trademark, so I usually try to take snapshots when he's doing it too. And he'll usually follow once in a while, but he tries to keep it keep the pace going. But uh, yeah, today, like I said, will will be his last quad day for Olympia. He's pretty much quad dominant with just been always been quad dominant. So we actually do. We're going to take one big day today. Uh, going into Olympia, we'll probably do some light touch-up work just to keep some blood in the area. But really for him, I mean, this is one of his features. This doesn't need any extra help. So like I said, today we're going to just tear it down as much as we can and then, like I said, just keep going. So, so you find taking that much time off before the show allows yeah, a little more Yeah, actually for him, because he's doing, you know, two and a half hours, sometimes even three hours cardio a day on the stair mill, his legs get so much inflammation due to the blood flow and stuff. So we actually... The last few days, we take everything off from legs, lower body, even cardio, and his legs have been responding so much better. Um, actually, doing a lot of, actually, I have a little trick I do with him too. I actually have a therapeutic stick. I usually kind of rub out the fascia stuff the last few days just to keep kind of draining them out. And it seems to help with him because usually he's the type of person his legs will really get really stimulated coming into the very last few days because of that. So, like I said, we do everything we can to kind of keep him, you know, pieced together until when he gets on stage. And then, of course, his legs have a, a completely different dimension on stage where he has a lot of good feathers. Um, a lot of different detail, but like I said, with right now, like I said he'll be uh, he'll be filling today's workout for next probably for next at least next week. So, come on, show man. All right, let the games begin. It's worth it though. We just started. Push. Push. Keep going. Three. Come on. Good. Nine. Come on. Get up. Oh. 
see any drop the tears off. Oh shit, here we are. Come here. Get it over. Sit down. Back on the hill, back on the hill. Good. One. Two. Good. Three. Good. Oh, hold it. Hold it. Oh, shit. Oh. Two. Full range. Sit. Back on the hill. Good. Two. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, one more. One more. One more. Oh. Oh. We got what we call one and a half. We go down, we come up halfway, go back down, and come all the way up, which is one, which one and a half times one. So we got two rounds of this. We are super set. We're a Bulgarian squad. Man. I don't care if we're number one set, it's still gonna hurt. But it's only gonna get better. Only way to Six reps of a 3-3-3 three, three, three speed, and then we'll do a rep to failure. But we're going to change our stance. We're going to do to short width, then we're going to do wide, kind of a plie form, and then we're going to lower on the uh, leg press. So pretty much hitting a little bit of hamstring on this, but also a lot of quad too. So, this is the one they actually hate the most probably. But uh, yeah, but we've actually used this a lot in our, actually used a lot for Chicago prep, and it seemed to work a lot better. Don't have to necessarily go as heavy, but especially as far as the tension is a lot more. So. I mean, these sets actually probably last about a minute and a half long, so that's why it makes it tougher. So, yeah, <laughs> a little different speed on it for sure. Slide me three down, three five, three up. Oh my oh, goodness. Control it, control it. Down, pause, one, two, three, up, slow. One, two, three, one. Okay. Down, two, three, pause, one, up, slow. Up, slow, slow, slow. All right, now rip it up. Oh, yeah. Don't lock down this one. Keep it going. Keep it going. One, two, keep it going. Three, get it down. Four. Ah. Breathe. Come on, breathe. Ah. Ah. Come on. Five. Come on. Six. Give me a few more. Come on. Seven. Come on. Push. Eight. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Don't lock down the top. Keep going. One, two, three, four. Five. Good. Let me see. That's only gonna get better, though. That's only gonna get better. Control it. Pause. Pause. Up slow. Good. 
Roll it. Down. Hold it. Hold it. Up. No, I'm not doing it. I'm only doing it his own. That's called hard work. about to really see see me cry I got a hundreds a hundred reps of leg my leg curl after about second set you gonna see me start crying here we go ten first set okay. damn two three four nine eight ten drop it one, two, three, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One, two, three, eight, nine, thirty. Good. Hold it. Let's go. One, two, three, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Halfway. Two, one. Good job. Oh, please call 911. And tell him come. He's about to be a man down. Yeah, powerhouse you. Man, I told y'all you gonna see me cry. Not real tears though. I'm about to build painful tears. Oh. That's a hundred. I forgot about them, man. I know. <sighs> Tight coming. Working hard, baby. Every day. Working hard. Tight, working hard. Look at these wheels up. Wheels, we ain't shows. But a hundred reps, I can't breathe. I got cotton on. I just drunk some water, still dry, but I'm working hard, I'm working hard. Adin, where you walking? You didn't see me? Hell no! Adin! How can you miss her? Where you walking for real? Introduce her. Introduce y'all to my big sis. 
Miss Olympia competitor, Chicago Pro Champ 2. She Miss Olympia by default, but we ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> she still champion in my book. She here doing some cardio. She got a couple guest posts coming up. She still looking good and tight. Looking good. She should do this workout with us. No, y'all look ah, like, like Say hello to the camera, Monique, Monique Jones. Say hello to the camera. What do you think about this cat? He's a monster. I've seen, I've seen the pictures. I've seen him up close. He's, he's a monster. He's gonna do some damage. Actually, here we're, we're first we're gonna do is the first set. It's gonna be 30 reps. So straight, we're just getting more blood in the area. The next we're gonna break it. We're gonna actually do a slow set for 10 reps. Squeezing at top, holding for three, come down for three. The last one's gonna be a mix of both. 15 reps first is gonna be fast pace. Half the weight down, 15 really slow. And the last 15 is gonna be a struggle. So he might have to take a few breaks, but that's what we want. So this is the last day. So we're gonna make it count. So yeah, we ready? We're gonna make it count. <laughs> 17, 18, 19, 20, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, Hold down, slow, squeeze, up, squeeze, hold. Come on, squeeze, squeeze. And would like to participate. Slow will be two and two to two up, squeeze, two down. You might not know what I was talking about. I told you we loud, right? Hey, everything you doing, Eight, almost. Yeah. Up. Ah. Right, breathe a little bit. Yeah, six ah. more. Breathe. Six. Yeah, six more. One more. Up, up, up. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Down slow. Good. Oh. Oh. We done. Tight. Done. We done. We done. Last leg workout for the O. We got one more next time. We got one more left. Man, <laughs> Y'all have a tank, training workout, live and cold. Y'all saw how brewery it was. Y'all saw me laying the floor about 30 times. <laughs> but I survived. So I've been doing this for about six months. And every time we do legs, I do the exact same thing. <laughs> so so y'all saw it hands on. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Y'all saw how hard I work. Hope this hard work gonna pay off at the O. So y'all stay tuned. Keep in touch. Instagram, C Tank Dixon. Twitter, C Tank Dixon. Facebook, Charles Dixon. Y'all keep in contact. I'll see y'all at the O. So we're gonna pose in a few minutes. So y'all see a little footage of me posing and see what I look like. I hope y'all like what y'all see. And uh thank y'all for being fans. So we're gonna go pose for I pass out. <laughs> Tight just been posing and finish up the leg training session. I want to thank my coach, Dr. Trey Hard, my workout partner, JT Money. I want to thank Performance Labs and Aaron for signing me to Chicago Pro. Appreciate you guys. 
Looking forward to doing some good things with y'all here soon. Uh, thank all my fans, everybody at the Powerhouse Jail. I want to thank Mock Video for coming to see me. Come put the time in me. I really appreciate y'all coming down to my hometown, coming to my house. And uh, man, I really enjoyed it. I want to thank the Olympic Committee uh, for the hospitality coming to the Olympia. Thank all my fans. Y'all keep supporting me. Uh, hit me up on Instagram, like I said earlier. And um, look forward to seeing y'all in Vegas. The tank is coming to Vegas. Be there. I'll talk to y'all soon. Wait on. IFBB Pro, Jose Raymond here, the Boston Mass, here with the Giant Killer. DH, here at the Montanary Brothers Powerhouse in New Haven, Connecticut, guys. We're about to uh, rock and roll, do a little insane, silly leg action. Uh, nothing like you normally see going through the motion stuff. Uh, made up a little something, something so that uh, guys see a lot of blood flow, a lot of probably who's, you know, it's going to probably be laying on the floor in the Jesus Christ pose after a while. No offense to those that are religious and minded. That's just what we call it. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're four weeks out. That's right. Here, kids. Let's do it. Do try this at home. What do you have for your pre workout? Hey. Oh, chicken and rice. What else? You got about eight ounces of chicken? Yeah. Just about. I love that shit. Convenient. There's still a duck face. Yeah, my wife and I definitely sat down this morning and we uh, got a little sticky note and started laying out some stuff. And I looked around the gym and, and he actually has everything I thought about doing. So. <laughs> <laughs> to see this either before and after what our legs look like before nice and separated and striated afterwards not a chance at all i'm glad i drive an automatic <laughs> all right there you go <laughs> Kids a big bag of bubbles, right? What are we doing? Out middle in. So just basically how we're going to get out here. Not mean.
warmed up? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Plus reps. in the business. Bring mine up the car, but hey, no slouch either. So check it out. <laughs> Anyone who knows me is I don't train without a coffee. Oh. Alright, one more heavy set or a heavy exercise. And then the next two are gonna be a super set. We're gonna do a combination. Oh, this is gonna be the uh, Charles Glass, Dorian Yates, whoever inspired it. 45 degree leg sled. It hits the side side quad immensely, guys. Puts a lot of blood flow in there, a lot of separation. I think I contribute my ham, hamstring quad separation with this, so definitely works. Check it out. A little full right now. That's it. No separation yet. Yeah, no separation anymore, hardly. So. This is still separated a little, a little bit. I need two catching up. Let's do it. Yeah, we did shoulders and we did shoulders. 
back the other day. My legs today. Well, since I live here now, man, you know, it's in the area. I should be training the chest. Yeah, okay. Find out a secret to that. Oh, I that. He's got fucking doll. He's the dolly pot in the bodybuilding. <laughs> where you're at. So now your foot is at a 45, bring it up in the middle of that. Right there. Okay. And how do I, okay. Uh, grab, grab one of the handles and put your hand back there or wherever you can. Wherever's gonna, the cover's gonna slide off first. But I normally keep the underlying leg pinned up against that, that bar. And whichever way it's more comfortable. It's gonna be a glute hand side kicking. Take this, this leg right here. I keep it here. So basically, it almost acts like you stop it right there. I can handle safely.
I love the train, man. I live the train. And, uh, it's no better feeling for me. So even even if it's in pain, it feels like the body's burning up from whatever you're doing. It's temporary. But uh, I love this. If for nothing else, it just feels awesome for me, you know. <laughs> As long as, I, as long as I can physically do something, I'm going to. Whether I'm 85 years old and curling soup cans in the kitchen or whatever the heck it is, doing some crazy Jack Lane stuff, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, you know? I, I just feel that being physically fit, man, is definitely an important thing as well. And the laziness factor kicks in for a lot of people on why they can't do things. And I, I just don't wanna be that person, you know? That's the last one. Your turn. <laughs> All right, here we go. Right. Oh, this is a little awkward. Are you Come on. Huh? Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> very very <laughs> nice. <laughs> when I got tea. <laughs> All right, five, five, nice students. Don't put this on any gay sites. Uh, not anything against gays. I love gays, but I'm not one. Uh, You're going out the beard for your bear? bear band, right? I'm a bear. I'm going to grow the chest here soon. How sexy is that? Woo! Clean reps, clean reps.
feels good. I feel like a sissy. That one sneaks up on you. I felt like I could do 50 of them. Almost fell down at 15. Same thing, or you keep moving on? No, this is just going to be it for quads. I'm going to do a set of uh, stiff leg uh, dumbbell deadlifts. Where are you going? Let's get a check on Chewy. Oh. Is there a little drool in there? Hey, baby. <laughs> He's got the nice, cleanest coat. Get back. Another month to get in shape. I'll be shredded. I'm just coming to the realization that I literally tore my hamstring off the bone when I was 18. When I do a side shot, my left one hangs, and my right one's missing. I remember tearing it. It was black and blue from my ass to my calf. I did it playing softball. Tupperware, bro. You can physically pick that shit up. It feels like a fucking brick. Wow. When was this? Now. After. He's close to where I got a meal. Four cups of rice, 16 ounces of chicken. You're gonna shit like a donkey. What are you doing for post-workout? I have a shake. I also brought a, some tuna. Mm. So I'll have a shake immediately to Where's get it in me. Uh, 50 grams of whey. It's called ISO Team um, from iForce Nutrition. Uh, then I will um, have 10 ounces of tuna and rice on the ride home, and that's it. Oh, you, what are you doing for carbs? Like he's just doing carbs post workout right now. That's it. I don't have more than 100 grams a day. He's gonna have 200 in one sitting. Um, yeah, if he doesn't train, he doesn't have carbs. He don't do cardio either. 
very different process that obviously works for him, you know? Damn hands don't fit in here. You know what I'm saying, Bruce? <laughs> This concludes our workout. That was uh, very different as usual than what I'm used to. David is a very methodical, calculated trainer. So let's see. Hopefully I stole a few of his tricks and can bring some of that insane, separated, crazy muscle. Either way, it's gonna be a great show. Fans are gonna love it. And, uh, you know, we don't do this just for ourselves. We do it for the fans. Because we know as bodybuilding fans, we like to see a great product. And that's what we're going to bring you. So stay tuned. We'll see you all there. All right, I want to thank my sponsors. Because I wouldn't be here without them. High Force Nutrition. It's been amazing. Sending me all over the world. We're taking, taking the supplement industry by storm, going global. Muscular Development Magazine, who's been just about as instrumental as anyone in getting my face out there on the web. Of course, my boy, Steve Cardillo, and ANC Nutrition. That they are like family to me, and uh, do everything in the world for me. And uh, just want to thank them. Greatest belts in the world. Thank you. Hey, for the, uh, for the viewers out there, you guys are probably wondering, Dave, your awesome wife and your daughter. Well, she's wife and uh, caught a caught a little nasty bug, and she couldn't be out here this time, so she's home watching my little my little super wonder of a girl. And, uh, it's the first time they missed the battle for the old stuff, guys. So, but uh, you'll see him at the Olympia. Yeah. All right, my shout out goes to, of course, first and foremost, my wife Nikki, and my daughter Brenna. You know, they've been instrumental in uh, my mentality overall uh, for this prep and any year after this. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, definitely my sponsors, uh, 4DN, 4 Dimension Nutrition guys. Check them out. They're awesome. They've been fantastic for support for me and everything else. Uh, Dr. Scott Stevenson, hey, buddy. I miss you, man. Can't wait to get down there and train with you or something when I, whenever I can. And uh, just overall, man, thank you for the fans, uh, for, for the support. For the awesomeness. Bruce, thanks for coming out every time, man, and, and checking this out and rocking, man. So look forward to seeing the end result. You guys take it easy, train safe, train hard, and we'll see you catch your deal. Go for the number one spot. Aaron Clark, IFBB Pro, three weeks out from the Olympia 212 division. This is my first year getting to do this show, so I'm real excited. I'm about to take you through my delt workout, so stay tuned, pay attention, and let's kick it. For shoulders, I mean, I, I switched up a lot of things kind of here and there. Um, I think like anybody, when you first start training, you, you do way too many heavy pressing movements. And, um, I'm not going to say that I don't still press heavy sometimes, but um, if you want to be a bodybuilder and you want to have the best shoulder development you can, you can't shoulder press the maximum weight that you can press every workout. So I pre-exhaust nowadays and uh, I just do more volume, uh, get a lot more blood in the muscle and really focus on training the delt rather than uh, pressing and such. I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking the heavier the pressing, the more progress they're making. And uh, you can do that for a couple of years and then you won't be able to train shoulders at all, so. We should start with a little bit of traps. Um, I know that traps aren't really part of the shoulder, but I've always done that. I used to do more heavy strokes, but again, I've kind of involved in doing just more volume and, um, you know, 
doing heavy drugs is kind of in my mind just because you're putting so much strain on your back and your hips and so many different tendons are just being yanked on. And uh, if you want to train heavy, all the rest of your body parts don't waste your energy and your tendons and struggling to set it out. So I'm going to do an upright row on this uh, low row machine. It's kind of a unique way I like to do it. I'm going to do this super set of the dumbbells right here. Not too heavy weight, but just to kind of fill the muscle with blood to get a good shot. and then I'll get into doing my presses. Um, especially recently, uh, one arm at a time. 
just because um, I've had some injuries. I had a pec tear and a uh, shoulder injury before, so I think another thing you got to be careful with, uh, especially with barbells, but you can have with dumbbells too, is that when you get into pressing really heavy, you'll really uh, accentuate your imbalances, which will, uh, without doubt, lead to injury. So, for me, doing it like this has made it so I have no choice but to really focus bilaterally and uh, really develop the circuit inside evenly. So you got your first pro win this year, right? Yeah. At the New York? Yeah. How's that feel? Feels good. I mean, of course. Um, you know, I feel like it's, at least so far, it's been a real breakthrough year for me. Um, you know, I, I finally had the opportunity to really push it and really dedicate myself to it. That's the hardest part. Um, you know, having sponsors here, IMD, um, you know, it helps. Uh, and to also just kind of have that uh, almost validation behind you that uh, it's worth it or that, uh, you know, you really can do it. Um, you know, it helps you keep pushing and set the next goal. And uh, what's that next level? What year did you turn pro? 2004. So you're 24? Huh? How old were you? 23. 23? Yeah. So, you know, off the bat it was hard because no one picked me up. Um, you know, I didn't really have any uh, exposure much. And I think that was a big disappointment because at 23, when you win USA's first try, you think uh, your life's about to turn around, everything's going to be different, but the reality of the situation is you just spend all your money doing the USA's, and now you get a pro card in the mail after you spend enough, you know, not to say not have complaining, I choose to do it, but it takes a long time. It's really not, you know, you dive in, but you're not going to learn to swim for a while. Not to say that. Side down movement, and then go through rear delts. Thank you. 
I think I gotta drop below those 80. Just One of our cable waves, and um, we'll do one more burnout thing. Probably two things for rear delts. See training where you're also doing it wrong. Um, your, uh, you know, your, your, your rear delt is such a very small muscle, and it's right next to a lot of very large muscles. So a lot of people think they can lift a lot of weights with the rear delts, but they're really just lifting that way with their rhomboids and all the other mu muscles, and then they can't figure out why they don't have any rear delts. So these are a few exercises that are not really heavy, but I've kind of been able to develop a good mind muscle connection with.
I'm going to go have my rear dollar just as I can tell you later, man. I'm stupid. Yeah, you know, I used to do a little bit of stuff on the shoulders, but uh, this time I'm going to do something a little bit more. I found, I also find that, uh, you know, you got to be realistic with how much you really got in your tank in terms of energy expenditure, because it's not about just calories, but it's your central nervous system, you know, and, uh, not even physically, but mentally, how much can you recover to give 100% to your training? Um, I think that comes with, you know, time doing it and you'll get a better idea of really where your sweet spot is. I mean, I see some guys who train twice a day and I know that I can't do that. And it could be that I train harder, could be that they just have more energy, I don't know. I don't, I don't there's not really any way for me to know, but um, you know, you gotta experience, figure out where that is. Cause uh, once again, you know, if you're putting all this energy in your cardio, and then people are like, well, well, you just got to dig deep and train just as hard. I mean, sure, you can dig deep and train hard, but you'd be lying if you said that you'll be able to train just as hard because that's not in the reality of the situation.
what your calories and carbs look like right now? Um, you know, it's really not too bad. To be honest with you, my appetite is not huge. Um, so I still do red meat once a day, just to kind of keep myself full. It's either steak or uh, like a grass-fed beef that I'll buy. Um, and at least two, I'll say, over times three, and my other meals are egg whites um, that I drink, two cups, usually mixed with some, uh, like a fiber product or, or a superfood greens, just to kind of help with the digestion. Um, that, of course, is a very time efficient way to diet um, because you don't really have to prepare it. It's already pasteurized, your body can process it, and you just drink it down, and your meal is done in 10 seconds. Um, you know, I'll have carbs with that meal. I like cream of rice. Um, I do jasmine rice, some sweet potato. I really stick with jasmine rice a lot, though. Um, you know, I avoid the gluten. But I'd say realistically, my carbs are like, depending on the, the highest will go for a meal. Right now, it's about a cup and a half of rice. And you know, at the end of the day, depending on my day and what I weigh and how I look, I'll cut it down and it'll slowly go down to a cup and a half a cup and then to just more, you know, a little higher fat content on my last meal with more fiber and then that's that. But to be honest, I've never gone zero carbs in my life. Um, it has to do with my metabolism. I always train hard. Um, you know, I've always been in the gym minimum of two hours, I'd say five days a week, you know, all year round. So, and I don't, I don't really binge eat per se. I'm not somebody who really, I enjoy, you know, a little ice cream or whatever here and there, but if you do that in moderation, you can almost do it all the time. You know, it's about self-control and uh, once again, learning your body. You need to learn how to eat, not just follow a diet. Um, uh, it's important because a lot of times foods are not bad. They are just, uh, you eat them at the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's an important thing to learn. shoulders twice a week at the most um, but really my training cycle is kind of centered around my leg workouts like I said I'll do quad and hamstring one about five days apart um, so yeah I'll fit in the workouts in between then sometimes shoulders is one of those workouts I'll do one time heavier and then if I need an extra day I'll throw another one in depending on how I feel if my arm feels like it's gonna fall off or I feel like I want to get back on the gym Watching me do go through my shoulder workout a few weeks out from the Olympia. Um, I'm really excited to make an appearance. I want to thank my sponsors, Gear Nutra and Muscular Vet. 
muscular development, the number one bodybuilding magazine on the planet. So keep an eye on me, guys, because I'm going to make an impact here in three weeks. Come back tomorrow, we're going to hit some legs. So until then, it's time to eat, clean up, and we'll kick it tomorrow. Peace. All right guys, today's my last shorter workout. Um, coming into a week out from the Mr. Olympia. Digging deep for um, for this workout, very tiring. But um, you know, I got you guys your experiences. I got, I got Neil Hill here in town, and my training partner, human that's that waiting for me. I want to introduce you guys to the owners of the gym that I've been training for uh, this year's Olympia and last year's Arnold Classic. Amazing supporters of bodybuilding. This is my new home, guys. Athletic Factor in Pompano. Um, I think like you should have mentioned Hall, these guys. I like my, my second family here. Mm. And, um, you know, they've been wonderful. So, can you do some, can talk about the gym? Yeah, the, uh, we're a 20,000 square foot uh, full facility uh, with every brand of equipment you can think of. Everything from the new equipment that's out there to the old school hardcore stuff that the guys used to do. Uh, we have everything from Housewives, professional athletes working out here, uh, WWE wrestlers, NFL football players, and of course uh, the one and only Mr. Olympia and Arnold Classic winner Flex Lewis. Um, Flex is a pleasure to have in this club. The ultimate pro takes the time, talks to every single member, and the amazing thing is he remembers each and everyone's name and everything about them. Uh, just a total pleasure. Even a week out from the show, he's in a great mood. Uh, laughing with everybody, having a good time, and the guy looks absolutely fantastic. He's going to three-peat this year. Absolutely. What do you think about this Flex character? Oh, he's amazing. He's so sweet, and he's he's so good-natured, and everybody likes him. And he is going to win. <laughs> we, we predict this year, after seeing Flex pose yesterday, he's going to be first, second, and third. Yeah. Yeah, my coach, Neil Hill, he came into town uh, a week ago. I'm here with my uh, training partner, Human Eaton, uh, who uh, is going for the Nationals this year. Um, so we've been kicking it hard for the last couple of months here in Athletic Factor here in Florida. So um, coming up to over two years now I've been in Florida. So it's a great move for me. Again, uh, beautiful weather here, you know, uh, all year round. As you can see, I'm always in the sun. But uh, digging deep the last couple of days, getting hard and going into the show. Um, like I said, manipulating the carbohydrates. Um, and uh, again, drop weight a couple of days, go very fast just in, in changing that alone. So the last couple of days, Neil kept my weight up high before changing things around and then bringing me in the last couple of days, which I'm sure Neil will talk about. So I'm gonna do my set and I'm sure you'll hear about that dialogue later, but we're here to train, last shoulder workout. Getting increasingly uh, oh, we have, come on. difficult, but um, if it was easy, everybody'd be doing it, right? And so I've got a good team around me, getting my head the right times, and uh, nope, nope. just uh, nope. push me through the last oh, couple of workouts. Come on. 
because I, I stay within striking range all year round anyway, so I stay in good, good all season shape and keep going. You know, walk around like a professional most year. You know, so when it comes down to to diet and actually grow into the show, so I start my off season like pretty much. I want to say like 15 weeks out, 12 weeks out sometimes, and then come six weeks out, I've already gained about eight pounds of lean muscle because I've been so consistent, not missing meals, not necessarily doing any cardio at that point in time too, but come a couple of weeks out, then everything then starts changing. So um, where we are now, you know, I could have stepped on stage. Realistically, my body allowed me a couple of pounds heavier a few weeks ago. But um, now it's about fine tuning. So I'm in that class top end. And if I can make improvements each and every year in the detail and refinement, that's it. So now at the moment, is, the weight is there, top end of the scale. And now it's just like, you know, an artist looking at it painting and putting in the small little details so that's where we are now. Good, come on. Big deep, good. Good, 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 good set. Good. Good set. Good. Oh, crazy pumps considering. I think the fact is he's in town as well, you know, so that helps a lot because he gets in my head. But this whole entire prep has been phenomenal, not really had many crazy down days. My weight has, yeah, come down nice and slow. But um, considering preps of all, I've had, you know, four weeks out days where I've had a lack, very lack of energy. So it's been pretty consistent this prep, you know, kept in fat pretty high throughout the, the duration. Of, come down slow is now the last 10 days is when it's kicked in and then obviously Neil's been here for the last week of that 10 days so just as I started tanking he was like come on bro it's like Christmas time he says three more sleeps I'll be in town <laughs> and then yeah. obviously he goes to all the pilot then so it's been good having him around all of this is. Yeah, I think that also the fact that it shows his physique because you know he's got so much more fullness going on and his strength is pretty high as well. So not that we get caught up with the weight, but it's not he's not lifting exactly light weight still. So um, obviously we're very careful that he's not pushing the boat and lifting a weight which potentially is going to increase the risk of injury. But knowing that he's, um, his muscle pumps are still very full, he has not any days that he's not getting pumped at all and the, the pump is actually staying throughout the whole duration of the workout. Um, we're not going to have to deplete hard for this, this show. We're going to keep you know, his carbohydrate levels are pretty high and steady. We're only two pound away from making weight anyway, so we're in a really good place. So I refed him four days ago, um, given two really high days because his body weight dropped down to 212.8, and he was actually stage ready then. So it wasn't the fact that his weight was stage ready, it was about his physique was ready. Didn't even have to drop water or drop sodium, he was that dry. So basically elevated his weight back up now over the last few days. And then um, I'll look at sort of drying them out a little bit sort of mid-week next week just to cruise them down into that weight class. And then we can obviously start throwing those carbs back in and get some volume within the muscle belly. So I think you're definitely going to see a... I'm a very, very happy how he's currently looking for this show compared to the Arnold's. The Arnold beginning of the year. It was a great show for him and obviously looked great. But um, I definitely found his physique started to fade as we got closer to the show, as he started to lose weight and lose muscle going into the show to make the body weight. He started losing pop and he started to lose his lines. This time his body's got harder and harder and drier and drier. So uh, definitely shows in his physique, guys. Would you say this is probably the easiest prep? Um... I would say so because it's, it's done the opposite to what I thought it would do. Because for the Arnolds, everything was perfect until about two, two and a half weeks out. And then as we started losing more and more weight, which we had to to make weight, we started getting softer and softer. And I was very concerned that we were going to have the same issue. And obviously we know that we can get a certain amount of hardness back and fullness in the muscle once you start throwing carbs back in. But um, he needed another couple of days on top of what we did for the Arnolds because a couple of days after the show he really did look fantastic. He was about four or five pounds heavier. This time, when we've hit that sort of 212.8 weight, 
still very full and he was very, very, very dry. He was stage ready. So, and his back was very, very hard. And that's one thing what was fading when I saw the, the Arnold, uh, Arnold prep. Uh, and he's definitely bigger. So he's bigger and rounder. So, um, yeah, he's in a really good place. Mentally, you know, physically, obviously he's tired. He's dragging ass. But at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I mean, he's two, two-time 212 Mr. Olympia. And guys, he will be three-time Mr. Olympia in one week's time. Um, no disrespect to the fellow competitors, but we're not going to Las Vegas to come second or third or fourth. We're going there to repeat, obviously, a third title, represent the sport and give back to the Federation and the IFBB Pro League and obviously all the fans. So we'll see you there. Okay. Well, this place is athletic. In fact, the gym I've been training, you know, um, for the longer year. Um, I was bouncing back and forth between another year and another gym, but now this is my my home. Uh, the owner is a big bodybuilding fan. He has uh, a lot of amateur bodybuilders here training for the nationals, for the USA's, high level, uh, level, top level amateurs, including my training partner who's going for this year's nationals. Um, that said, there's a lot of pros here as well. There's a lot of pros being here in the past and are currently training here. And um, again, big, big fans of the sport in general. A lot of athletes here in general also, so in varieties of different professions. So it's going to come in here every day at this point in time. Um, and as you can see, it's uh, it's like a VIP gym. It's dead. I can get my workouts in with uh, no disturbance. And uh, in the night here, then it's um, it's rocking. So I'm going to go on to um, either press and exercise now or we'll go on to some dumbbell raises uh, even though obviously this is a, a lateral raise I like the feeling the free weight so uh, we'll have a little feel around with maybe a pressing movement first of all and see how that goes and then uh, we'll definitely go on to it yeah so um, yeah, we'll see, kind of see what the joints feel like and then as I said we're week out so sometimes what we do is that the workout isn't actually set always the last week we kind of see how we feel as we go into the workout so yeah let's go hit it begins again. More flex. Come on. Good flex. Good man. All the way up. Come on. Number one. Number one. Good. Sucked in. I had to bite in the inside the mouth. 
on my lips. Good deal. I used to see he they wearing the gum shields like he they. Mm. I'm used to beating out on the road. Come on. Good. Why are you wearing a gum shield, my friend? He's like, ah, I bite through lip. I go, you bite through lip? I go, what? I know now what he means. Sorry, he there for the bad impression. You know you're my boy. But uh, every year. So I did get a gum shield custom made for me, but like everything else, I lose it. You can segue, you can segue to the part now as I'm mentioning. As I'm mentioning he day and his mouth guard. Insert mouth guard photo here. See if we can show the viewers. Trains with his athletes to the death that I know of. I know there's a couple of big name coaches out there, but he actually comes, does every workout, even cardio sessions. I mean, a lot of athletes have a luxury to have a great coach, have a, the best coach. I will say that because we've been 11 years strong from the beginning. Not many, not many coaches will. Not many athletes as well who are still loyal to their coaches and coaches loyal to their athletes. Through thick and thin, ups and downs. to go over to do a press you know again at this point in time uh, it's just keeping blood in the muscles so Good. Uh, 
All you want. Good flex. Okay, guys, it's our shoulder workout finished. You can see there's basically sort of four different exercises. Um, volume was kept high, trying to focus on different hypertrophies, but more importantly, we're trying to get focus on sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and maximize fast switch and medium twitch muscle fibers in the plate. And obviously, finishing off the slow twitch muscle fibers as far as depleting those down. Flexes. Um, Glycogen store at the moment, storage at the moment is very, very low, obviously, because carbohydrate intake has been very low. It is today anyway. I actually uh, loaded them over two days, so I actually loaded them yesterday a bit, and obviously the day before. So basically, I manipulated his carbs, they've got his carbs back up to about 400, then I dropped them to 300, and then today they're only actually going to be about 110 grams. Um, tomorrow you'll get gradually drier and drier. So I'm throwing a little bit of water today from the refeeding, but also. There's a lot of sodium which went into his diet as well over the last two days as well. Um, but his strength is high, he's still keeping his strength and obviously he's obviously a lot of volume taking place in there. One week out from the Olympia. Uh, sorry I'm out of breath but I've been training as well so I've just been watching these guys. And this is kind of like independent, in, indirectly, you know, a typical workout as we start going into the show. It's not necessarily a fixed particular uh, workout. I do that with a lot of my actual athletes. I've got three other athletes going into this year's Olympia in different classes. And they've got the programs which they're following. The beauty about me being here is obviously I can see what Flex looks with, like with my own eyes. Whereas with them, obviously I just have pictures. But anyway, one week's time. It'll be the first day of the 50th. Uh, Joey is Mr. Olympia in Las Vegas. I hope you guys make sure you get up to watch that show. I know that tickets have been sold out weeks and weeks in advance, so obviously I'm sure that's going to tell you there's going to be a lot of electricity, energy and excitement in the air. I'm really excited to see this year's show, not just obviously because Flex is going to be stepping on stage, battling for that title once again, but most importantly, because it's so iconic that, you know, this is the 50th year of the Joe Wiz Mr. Olympia. So, hope you guys make sure that you check out this video, this DVD. But we've got an insight to what really takes place in the life of Flex Lewis and obviously all the other great athletes who are going to be featured in this uh, DVD series. Next week I get into Vegas on the Monday with Flex and William Bonac, and then we'll be in one of the gyms in Las Vegas filming me and William um, as his last depletion phase going into this year's show and obviously I know that a lot of you guys will be excited to see him and so many of the other great uh, new athletes who are going to be stepping on the stage for this year's Miss Olympia. so make sure we check it out. Um, when uh, Flex and I were training um, not too long ago, just you know, four or five weeks ago, um, tempo was a little bit different. Uh, he always keeps the tempo real fast, but um, it was a little bit slower than it is now. Um, we are training a lot heavier, and uh, like I said, the tempo was a little slower. But the last few weeks, especially since Neil's back in town, the tempo's just been fast, fast, fast. He goes, I go, he goes, I go. No break in between sets, and uh, just super, 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 super high volume. You know, I'm, I've enjoyed the experience, and I think he's gonna do very, very, very well at the Olympia. Um, this is definitely a new, improved flex. Uh, he's bigger, harder, and fuller than I've ever seen him, so I look for him to do some damage at the Olympia in a week and a half. All right, guys, that concludes the uh, short uh, rendition of shoulders. 
Um, like I said earlier, uh, during the workout, this today was uh, not a record breaker, any PBs. Um, this is all about just putting blood in that muscle. You know, for me to, to be a part of the Battle Olympia is a great honor. Um, for me to do it this close is uh, never something that I thought I'd be doing. I always said I'd like to do the Battle Olympia probably about two weeks, three weeks out before the show. So again, show you guys uh, you know, some sort of weight being thrown around. But um, with my schedule as the, the champ, unfortunately, you know, these, uh, these things uh, have to be fitted around sponsors, contracts with it. Let's start again. Let me start again. Off cut. Hard food. All right, guys, that concludes the shoulder workout today. Um, this was uh, a, a workout, again, that is not typical. As last year, it was, again, a little different to this year. Each and every year, you know, we put on a little bit of new muscle tissue on or refinement um, and then I adjust my current condition to to um, my current um, situation whatever so there's no cookie cutter diet there is no paper diet that's why Neil comes in a town um, we adjust reps sets daily we don't even know if we're going to be training tomorrow that's how much everything changes by per day so depending on my body weight tomorrow that dictates whether I do cardio or detect, dictates how much cardio I do. So today, uh, my body weight was uh, a little higher than the day before, so I done my normal amount of cardio, and then we pulled back on the actual training. So no PBs broken today. Again, as you can see, nothing crazy, um, but this is a real workout. I'm not gonna do anything that's gonna jeopardize that title in a week's time. So. Again, guys, there's obviously nothing that's going to bring you on the edge of your seat. There's something real, something that I hold to my heart to give back to you guys as the fans. You know, this was something that was unplanned. And again, thank goodness for the guys at uh, shooting the battle. They came in last minute to fit me into their schedule and uh, myself into their schedule. So otherwise, this may not have been shot. As I am so busy now on the road and I have been filming every single day to promote the sport. Um, and as this year's um, Mr. Olympia being the 50th anniversary is going to be televised on mainstream TV, I have been doing a lot of mainstream stuff to promote the actual show. So that said, um, as tired as I am, it's all about giving back. And again, I'm here, and you guys are here today following me um, again one week out. So brain dead, tired, um, digging deep to give this interview to you guys push through but as I say each and every year uh, it's all about up in the bar and bringing the best Flex Lewis each and every year to that stage uh, physically mentally and again uh, motivationally so again thanks for joining me guys today on our last shoulder workout I'd like to thank Neil Hill my partner training partner human and uh, my sponsors BSN Flex magazine my wonderful girlfriend Ali Rosen and all my family and friends around the world again not, not the last uh, by any means you guys as the fans you know I couldn't be doing without you guys supporting me in in my dreams uh, and allowing um, me to spread the, the positivity of bodybuilding all around the world as the champion so for me to you thank you guys um, and again, I'm coming for that third title this year to continue my legacy on and off stage and again, promote the amazing sport of bodybuilding. So again, you're in beautiful Florida. I'm signing out. See you guys in a week's time.
you doing, brother? <laughs> Say hi to your fans. What's going on, guys? Good to have you out again. We're at the Meet the Olympians event. This is uh, just the last you know minute preparation stuff to get ready for the wave of people that come in, but it's awesome because uh, we get one-on-one -on -one personal with fans. It's, it's the, the real fans from all over the world that are here. So it's awesome to be part of it, man. And I thank you guys for coming out and supporting Steve Kuklo, the Olympia, IBB, NPC, everybody. This is incredible. So let's get ready to knock this out. This is the start of the weekend. I literally said, and I just pulled them out. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Charles Dixon the Tank. I am here at Meet and Greet at the Miss Olympia, the 50th anniversary. And I'm ecstatic to be here. I've been here since 2009. I'm ecstatic. Looking forward to a good show. Um, and looking forward to meeting all the athletes, meeting all the fans. So if y'all here in Vegas, come out and check out all the um, athletes out. And come out and enjoy the show this weekend. I'll talk to you soon. So you're going to bring it this weekend or what? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah of course, of course. Right. I ain't going to show y'all what's underneath here yet. <laughs> but I promise what's underneath here is going to be very, very good. So I'm looking forward to a good show. It's going to be a good 212 showdown. So I'm looking forward to doing battle with all the good athletes here. And we'll see how everything turns out this weekend. So, so uh, um, a good army never reveals its weapons, huh? especially its tanks. Not yet, not the tank. <laughs> the tank. <laughs> <laughs> Not the tank. The tank ain't revealed it until war time. So it's time to go do battle. I show time to do battle. Then the tank will reveal everything. <laughs> Got it. So you have to show that again. That's awesome. Where is one? You just about to get coffee. What's up, everybody? We're going to be having the best Olympia ever. Wait till you guys see it. All great champion. But of course, one of them is going to win. And you know who. Oh, my God. Look at that. Look. What's up? What's up? Now it's a party. And we got the Now it's a party t-shirts. Yeah, I'm happy. She showed us some of those. We're smiling. How you one feeling? day out, I feel great. As you can see, I'm in shape. Basket, I'm going to bring um, some sick conditioning. So happy to be here, it's amazing. And I'm here with my beautiful wife, number one fan. Oh, I can't say that, my parents and her are my number one fan. Uh, here representing the East Coast and uh, East Coast Mecca. And um, hopefully, uh, well, it's gonna be fun regardless. Whatever the outcome is, I'm gonna have fun. And um, I'm gonna just give a shout out to Bruce. You're the man. It was so much fun working with you. I look forward to many years of working with you, brother. And thank you very much for all the support and for being just you, which is a great person. Hey, look at Mama, Daddy, smile. <laughs> B. Oh, nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> Bruce, what's up, man? What's up, man? What's up, Grizzly Adams? How you doing? What's up? Battle for the Olympia fans. I'm here with my awesome little kiddo for the 2014 no. Mr. O212, guys. I'm a rocket. You know this, man. So <laughs> happy to be here, man. Happy to be here. Thanks, Bruce. I don't want nothing real tight on my head. I have to battle for the Olympia. We're here in 2014. Mr. Olympia meet and greet. Quadro, come check me out. I guess I'll eat a fire. You ready? Who's 
Bruce. Seven eighteen. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Bruce. Did you hear that, Jose? I'm gonna have to go with Bruce. Is what? Sexier. It's Bruce. Well, he in general is sexy. So he likes. See, you're tight. <laughs> Tall, dark, and handsome. Would you spoon him? I can't. Oh yeah. I might even fork him. See that of your BFO fans. Hey BFO, we're here at the 2014 Olympia. It's 24 hours before pre-judging for the men's open. About 36 hours before I'm on stage whooping ass. So um, buy the DVD of me training, and you'll see why I ended up winning. <laughs> so, so you lived up to the bearded lady status you created last year. I did. I did. I hey. forgot that comment. That was the best. Look at this. Yeah, but, uh, I can't see it with a big arm. In the <laughs> oh my god. The bearded lady of Boston. And we got my logo on the back. Oh, it's out right there. Isn't that what nice? is that? Well, that is a nice shirt. I love is that, that a Battle for the Olympia DVD? <laughs> <laughs> That's a large it's all about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right.
each other. Front double bicep.
in front double bicep. Eduardo, Flex, and Jose back in line, please. Front double bicep. Front lat spread. Side chest. Face the curtain for a back double bicep, please. Back lat spread. Side tricep. Abdominal and thighs. Most muscular. Relax. Balto, Aaron, and Heated Day back in line, please. Gentlemen, front double bicep. Front lat spread. Side chest. Back double biceps. Back lat spread. Side tricep. Dominoes and thighs. Favorite most muscular. Thank you, gentlemen, back in line. All right, folks, out of the program earlier in the day, you saw the 212 prejudging over at the expo, and you saw a great competition. 14 of the world's best on the Olympia stage tonight. I will introduce the 212 class and then we'll break it down to our top five placings. Please welcome your first competitor, Ahmad, Ahmad.
He's walking the tank, Charles Dixon. Six finalist closer routines. Please welcome our first finalist, Vito Evansport.
Thank you, Michael Emmerspoor. Our next finalist, please welcome Aaron Clark.
Give it up for Jose Lippen. Our next finalist is Japan's finest export. Ladies and gentlemen, Higatara Yamanishi.
check for $3,000 to our fifth place finisher, Baito Amesbor. They will take the fourth place award, the check for $5,000 to our fourth place finisher, Hidetara Yamagishi. They will take the third place award, the check for $8,000, the Olympia bronze medal to our third place finisher, Jose Raymond. And three times. 